Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I am going to talk about how you can create and manage a database directly inside of your chatbot. And I am using the UChat platform because they have a native integration with MongoDB. And if you want to check them out, I will also leave a link for both platforms down below in the comment section. Basically, I have a free account with MongoDB at the moment and the experience so far has been really, really smooth. But I want to show you how you can manage and create databases without having some kind of developer or techie background. Because it's really, really easy to do inside of UChat itself. So once you have connected, and I will also leave a link to the video description on how you can connect MongoDB towards your own UChat dashboard or the integration section rather. But once connected and you have created a few databases, you already see a few of mine popping up here. We have a CMA underscore member, CMA templates, which stands for my membership, Chapel Marketing Accelerator. Uh, we have uh, DF responses, which is dialect flow responses. And I have my main users list, my main subscribers list. Now, this can all be done directly here. You can create a new database or you can create a new collection inside of a database, as you can see here. And you can also manage and edit the records inside the database by pressing the pencil icon. You can adjust some values, you can add values. But again, the risk that it's, uh, if you are not having that techie background right, is that it can go sideways really, really fast. You can mess something up. And with the UI inside of UChat, it is really, really easy to create and manage these things. So first, let's cancel this. And let's go inside of UChat and manage to create a database first. So the way to do that inside of UChat is by going towards your main dashboard. And from here, you can go towards your integration sections. And from the integration sections from the left-hand menu, you can go towards data store. You will see the data store under the data file and storage section. From here, you will need to either sign up or log in for your MongoDB cloud account. I already logged in and you can see all my data stores being synced. Now, to create a new data store, it's really, really easy. You can just press the new data store button here. Once pressed, you can basically give it a name. So let's give it a name of demo. And from here, you can add fields towards this data store. These fields are basically the same, the equivalent of Google column names, right? So you have columns inside of Google Sheets where you want to store certain data from, like first name, last name, and stuff like that. And you can basically do the same inside of MongoDB. So each field is basically a key inside of a record. So for example, we have first name here, we have last name, we have email, we have phone, member status, updated and created are basically already added for you. But you can see that every single field basically is a key and then it will contain a certain value. So the way to add these fields is just by pressing the button. And let's say we are going with first name as the first field. And for me, uh, I always try to structure the fields, the custom fields inside the chatbot and the column names inside of Google Sheets, always the same. So if you have multiple names or multiple words inside of one field, inside of one column name, then it's always good practice to connect them with an underscore. Uh, this provides you with a lot less issues later on when you're really building advanced uh, setups with these, uh, with these data, uh, data fields, right? So for me, I will just implement first name underscore name. You can also enter a label or default value if you like to. I will just leave as is. And let's add a few more. Let's also add last name. Uh, this will also be text. And also let's go with a email, which will also be text. And let's also do a lead score. So lead scoring is a really, really important part of uh, determining how active your uh, most engaging followers are and at what point in time that you can send them an offer, right? So if you want to learn more about this topic, about lead scoring and how it can help you convert more users into paying customers, leave a comment down below and I will try to record it as soon as possible. But for now, we are going to implement a field called lead score and we can basically change this type towards number because we want to save it towards a number field. Once done, press save 
And I think I have enough fields for now. Let's press save. There we go. It takes a few seconds to create the database and the fields. But once done, you will see it on top of your data stores overview. Now, if we go towards MongoDB and refresh the page, we also should see that database directly inside here. And if we take a look, you will now see that we have a database called demo, but we also have some numbers before that. And that is something that UChat adds. That is not something that we can change. Um, but this is something that is done at the end of UChat. And basically the 95 is the workspace ID that is being added. And the 406, I do not know uh, why they are adding it or what it means. I just know that the first set of numbers is most likely your workspace ID, uh, just to make it a little bit more searchable for UChat, I think, uh, in their server overview. But you can see if we press it, we have no existing documents yet. So the way to basically insert a document manually would be to press this button, insert document, or we can do the same directly inside of UChat, which is much easier and way less, uh, way less prone to error, right? <coughs> Once in and you see your data stores overview, you can just go towards browse. From here, it will sync all your records. And of course, you do not have any data at the moment, but you can add a new record manually. You can just enter all the names. So let me just preview my values here. And let's also go with my email. There we go. And let's also implement a lead score of, let's say, 10 points for now. Let's press save. And this just takes a few seconds to implement. And once done, it will show up here. But if we refresh now in MongoDB, it should also show up. Unfortunately, this is not a live preview. So if new data comes in, you need to refresh the page. But if all goes well, we should see that record now. And as you can see, we have this record here with all my credentials. Now, you could, if you need to update the record, you could do this manually inside of MongoDB, but again, if, it's, uh, if you're not having that techie or developer background and you are a little bit scared to mess things up inside of this database, right? You can just go back towards UJet. And as you can see, you have a record ID now. So if we drop out, we can just browse by pressing the button again, and then it will fetch all the available records. In this case, it's just one. And we can press the edit button here. For example, if we need to change the email, we can do so manu manually. So let's go with my Gmail, for example, at gmail.com, there we go. And let's change the lead score to 25. Let's press save. Just takes a few seconds, but if we refresh in MongoDB now, you should see those values changed as well. That should be done in real time. And as you can see, my email now has changed towards the Gmail, right? And we also updated the lead score. So these are the ways that you can uh, create a database, add a record and manage those records. Now, if you want to add a field for some reason and you don't think those fields are enough, so like first name, last name, email, lead score, but you want to add a phone number, for example, that is also really easy to do. So if we uh, drop out here, and we go towards the main database data store overview, we can press the pencil icon here. We can just add a new field like phone, for example. So let's call this phone, let's leave it at text and let's press save. If we press save again, it will save that custom field value. And if we are going to browse the records now and we want to add a phone number towards that specific user, we can also edit that directly inside because you can now see that this phone value has been added. So for example, if we want to add a phone number, let's go and add it. So let's press save. Let's go and reload the MongoDB database and let's see if that phone number has been added down at the bottom. And as you can see, we now have that phone number. So how cool is this that you can just manage everything from within UChat with a really simple looking AI, right? It's really simple looking, it's really easy to use, but it goes much farther than this, of course, because we can also go towards the uh, chatbot itself. So let's go towards the uh, chatbot. Let's go and open a flow. I believe already set one up to test. But if we just delete these values for now, let's just delete them. 
and let's go with a new value. So let's say uh, we're going with an action block. Then under actions, add item, go towards integrations, and on top you will find data store. This is the data store connected with your MongoDB account. If we press edit actions, you will see a bunch of actions that you can use, and I will not go through each and every one of them, but I want to show you how you can add a new record, for example. So if we want to add a new record, we can select the data store. So let's go with demo. And inside we can basically map all values, right? So let's say we want to add a new record called John with last name uh, Doe. And then email would be John Doe at doe.com uh, with a lead score of five points and a phone number of plus one with a bunch of random values. Now the really cool part about this is you can attach this record towards your subscriber inside of the chatbot. This means that anytime they want to update their information, like a phone number, like an email or something like that, or you want to update their lead score, you can use that record ID to search for that user. So let's save this record ID towards this user by using a certain custom field I already set up, database underscore user underscore record. And then let's press save. Then let's output a value. Let's say we are just going to say value and then uh, add it to data store. Right? Just for us to determine that it is, has been successful. So if we preview this now, let's go with, uh, well, let's go with web and preview inside of a pop up because we can stay inside the visual flow builder that way. And if we go with record edit, there we go, add it to data store. And if we take a look right inside of here, so let's go and browse the data because that is something that you can do directly from the Visual Flow Builder. So you don't need to go towards the integration section. You can just do that inside the Visual Flow Builder as well. So let's browse the data and let's see if that record has been added. And as you can see, that record has now been added. And this specific record ID with 6DE2 ending with it, Let's see if we also can see that inside of MongoDB. So if we refresh, we should see that additional record there. So let's take a look. You can now also see that the number of total documents, the number of total records has been set to two. And if we take a look now, you will find all the available data. So we have first name, we have last name, we have email, we have lead score, we have the phone number, and we also see the when it's being updated and stuff like that, right? So, and of course the record ID with uh, which ending at 6DE2. So that is correlating with what we received as well. Now, what you can do is, for example, if you want to update something or you need to search something from the data store, you can also do so by that record ID. So what you could do is go back towards integrations, go towards data store, press edit action, and then we could say update a record inside the data store. If we say so, we can select the data store and now we need to have the record ID, right? So the record ID that we just saved, we can now update. So what we can do, we are going to search for that record ID. So that was saved in the database user record. And now we can update any custom field that we want to. So let's say we want to update the email, right? And the lead score, let's change the lead score to 35 points and the email to, let's say, jando at do.com. Let's say, um, let's say save and let's say update it to data store. And let's see if that worked, yes or no. So let's preview this again inside of a web pop up. And once we get that confirmation text, we should be able to browse again within the Visual Flow Builder to see that it has been added. So there we are, updated to data store. Let's just click out of the pop-up. Let's browse here just to check if everything has been updated. And now we have Jane, uh, John Doe with the email changed to Jane Doe and the lead score changed to 35. Now, if we take a look at MongoDB, that should also be synced. So, and there we go. So we now have the email Jane Doe at doe.com with the lead score updated as well. 
So you can see how easy it is to manage those records, to find records, to update records, and basically save all that data back and forth between your chatbot and your MongoDB data store. So I hope this video helped you in understanding how easy it is to be able to manage and create your own data store. Uh, for me, I made a switch from Google Sheets towards MongoDB because Google Sheets has a well-known API limit. And that API limit is 100 requests per 100 seconds per user. So me as a user with all my subscribers. And this in turn for the future could get me into trouble uh, if I am scaling my business and I have a high traffic chatbot, I could reach those API limits. And that could in turn result to data being lost, not being exported or imported from Google Sheets. And to basically prevent that, I am switching all my data and importing it inside of MongoDB, inside of different databases, data stores, and then using it inside my chatbot. And you can see how easy it is to manage, right? So there is nothing uh, developer-like or techie-like uh, knowledge that you need to have. You can just manage it entirely from within your chatbot or from within your integration section inside of the UChat workspace. So again, I hope this video helped you. If so, do consider dropping a like because it will help me determine if you want to see more of these kinds of videos, right? And if you want to have a specific video or a specific topic recorded for the next part or the next time, then drop a comment down in the video comment section. I will take a look at a daily basis and I will try to implement that and record that video as soon as possible for you. For now, have a great day, take care, and I will talk to you really, really soon.